Hi everyone, Alex here. Today I'm uploading a video that I created specifically for a friend and a client called James. Um, so this video is RTU for James and uh, it's obviously on Revit and the idea is how to create an RTU family using Revit. Uh, in this case this was RTU1 of our project and it looks something similar to this. Uh, the unit is a York unit, that's the manufacturer. The model number is the one that you see on screen. It's a 12.5 ton unit. Uh, it has bottom supply right here and bottom return. Uh, that's for your ductwork. You also have bottom natural gas inlet. It actually comes in through here and then I think it comes into the unit somewhere around here. But for simplicity, we keep it here at the bottom. We also have a front condensate discharge here. And the challenge we ran into is that, you know, we were looking at the spec sheet and it was pretty messy, you know, it was a little bit convoluted and it was hard to define the reference planes and all that. So the idea of this video, James, is to simplify things as much as possible so that you can build your own units in the future, okay? And obviously there's a bunch of other things. There's alternative condensate drain discharge points. You have flue exhaust, electrical connections all over the place around here, etc. We're not gonna focus on any of that. We're just gonna do our ductwork connection, our drain connection, and our natural gas connection. So let's start defining our reference planes. See you in the next slide. And obviously, as it always happens, uh, by the time I was almost done with this video, uh, we did get the, the York family from the rep. And uh, you can see it's a pretty complex family. You can even find nested families here. You know, you have a bunch of annotations here. You have generic model that includes the general clearance. So if we go there, we can see the clearance here as its own family. Let me see what else. We have a fan here under mechanical equipment. Uh, you also have some profiles, so if we study these profiles a little bit, we can easily see that this is where this geometry came from, right? Some kind of extrusion or a sweep, let's see. It was a sweep, see? And then you have all those electrical connectors and all that. But the only thing we care about for this exercise is the bottom return and supply uh, ductwork connections. We want our bottom gas connector here and we want our drain discharge connection here. That's the only thing we're gonna do. And we're gonna keep it very simple uh, just so that we practice a little bit. So I found a PDF in the York's website. It's a lot cleaner. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our unit, which is the ZJ150, and we're gonna get the dimensions from here. So as far as our reference planes, we're gonna define a left reference plane right here, a right reference plane right here, a front reference plane and the back reference plane for the overall box dimensions. That overall box is going to have a length which is B. In our case B is 119.5 inches. It's going to have a width which is 59 inches in our case and it's going to have a height A which in our case is 50 and 3 quarters of an inch. As far as our connectors we're going to have a return air duct around here so for that we're going to define a centerline reference plane in this direction and another one in this direction. And for that we're going to use this dimension here to this edge. And then this dimension here from this edge to this edge. In addition we're going to have a supply air duct. We're going to do something very similar. So we're going to have a plane here and a plane here. And we're going to use this dimension from this edge to this edge. And then we're going to assume the same distance from this edge to this edge. Then we have our right plane right here and we're going to use this dimension for that. Then we have this plane here that's going to define the bottom gas supply entry and then this plane here in the other direction. So for that we're going to use this dimension here and this dimension here. Then you have the bottom condensate drain option. I don't think we're going to go with that. We're just going to go with the front one. So in the front view we're going to define this plane here which is going to be 27 and 5 16 inches away from this edge and then this plane here which distance we're going to find in another detail. So let's go to Revit now and let's start defining all those reference planes. Alright so let's start our family. For that we come here to family, new and you can start with a generic model and then change that into a mechanical equipment or you can simply just go to mechanical equipment and get it started like that. But just so you get an idea, let's say we had started with a generic model. We go open. Then you take this and you change it up here to a mechanical equipment. And that's what makes it a mechanical equipment. We can keep always vertical, that's fine. You just click OK. 
So I'm going to click on the plane and do create similar CS. And I'm going to pick planes and I'm going to give it an offset of about 50 inches. I know that's going to be different later, but we're going to define some parameters. So for now, I approach from the right, boom, right plane. I approach from the left, boom, left plane. I approach from the bottom, boom, and I approach from the top, boom. So I have my four planes, let's label them. This one's going to be right. This one's going to be back. This one's going to be left. And this one here is going to be front. That overall box is going to have a length, which is B. In our case, B is 119.5 inches. It's going to have a width, which is 59 inches in our case. So let's go ahead and introduce some dimensions here. So for that, we come here to align dimension and we can click here, here, and here. Click outside. We make those equal. And then we do an overall dimension from here to here. We do the same thing from here to here to here. We make those equal. And then from here to here. And we place a dimension there. Now let's define a couple of parameters. So for this one, we're going to define a new parameter. And it's going to be called RTU length. We can keep it as a type parameter. Dimensions is fine. OK. And then we do the same thing with this one. But this one's going to be RTU width. Click OK. Now we go to a front view. We're going to define another reference plane. So I do create similar. I'm going to pick plane. And I know that my height's going to be about 50 inches. But let's do 40 just for fun of offset. And I'll pick this plane here. And this is going to be my top plane. So that's top. Now let's go back to our reference plane and let's define our extrusion. I'm going to take this dimension out so it's a little bit cleaner. And for my extrusion, you can either come here and do create and then select here extrusion. And then you can do a box like that and then AL and align to each one of the planes and lock it so that the geometry, you know, the face of the unit moves with your reference plane. Or even better, you can do create extrusion and then instead of creating your lines here like a rectangle you just pick a line and then instead of clicking and locking you can lock right off the bat right here so you can select this plane this plane this plane and this plane but then you have to obviously trim so you do tr from here to here from here to here from here to here and from here to here and then you need to give the extrusion a certain height and I know that height's about 50 inches, but again, just for fun, let's just do 30 inches. Okay? And I'm gonna do okay. And now let's go to our 3D view. So I go view one, and here's the extrusion, right? So pretty decent. And we have this sides here are fixed to the reference plane, so that's good. But when you go to the front view, you see that the top plane is not fixed to anything yet, right? So what we can do is we're gonna do AL for a line click on the reference plane, click on the face, and then lock to that. And then after I lock, I want to also dimension this so I can come from here to here. And I can associate this dimension to a new parameter called RTU height. And this is obviously not taking into account the curve. You would have to lift it up a little bit, whatever the height is, so that you can comply with your local code. So I'm going to click OK. And now let's go to our 3D view. And let's modify our parameters. So I'm going to come here, family types. And just to keep it cleaner, I'm going to create a new type. And this type is going to be the ZJ150. ZJ150. And I know that for the ZJ150, I have A, B, etc. So I know that my length is 119.5, 119.5 inches. And check it out. I'm going to take it to my other screen. I'm going to click apply. You see how this length got modified? Very good. I know that my width is 59, 59 inches. So I'm going to hit apply. Very good. And now I'm going to go with my height, which is 50 and 3 quarters. So 50.75 inches. OK, there you go. That's our box. And it's going to have a height A, which in our case is 50 and 3 quarters of an inch. As far as our connectors, we're going to have a return air duct around here. 
So for that, we're going to define a centerline reference plane in this direction and another one in this direction. And for that, we're going to use this dimension here to this edge. And then this dimension here from this edge to this edge. Now let's create extrusions that are going to serve as hosting for our duct connectors. So I'm going to change my visual style to wireframe. And I'm going to go back to my reference level, my top view. I'm going to take this dimension out a little bit. And I'm going to create another reference plane. So CS. I'm going to pick line and I'm going to offset a distance of 6 and 13 sixteenths of an inch. And with that distance, this is my plane. And just for clarity, I'm going to name this back duct edge. I'm going to create another reference plane. I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller, like this. So I'm going to create a dimension here, always from strong to weak. And you want the weak to be the one that moves, okay? So from here to here. And I know that that distance is 27 and a half inches. So I'm going to change it here. 27.5 inches. And then I have two other reference planes. Create similar. I'm going to have one here. I'm going to change my scale so it's a little bit better for me. I think maybe this scale is a lot better. I'm going to take this dimension and take it out a little bit. And I'm going to do create similar. And I'm going to create two reference planes here for my return air. So from here to here, that's going to be one. And then from here to here, that's going to be the other one. And I know that from here to here, that distance is 6 and 13 sixteenths. So 6 and 13 sixteenths of an inch. Perfect. And I know that from here to here, remember it's always from strong to weak. So we want this plane here to move if this dimension ever changes. So from here to here, that distance is 18 inches. So 18 inches. So this is 18 inches by 27 and a half. Very good. And now similarly, we have the supply. So create similar from here to here and from here to here. And then I know that from here to here, that distance is 32 and 11 sixteenths. And then from here to here, that distance is going to be 21 inches. And then I need another reference plane. So I'm going to do create similar. I'm going to do from here to here. And then this distance here, from here to here, is going to be 24 inches. So I'm going to take this out a little bit. I'm going to stretch this planes here, the returned, so it's a little bit clearer what's happening. I'm going to stretch this one out as well. So this here is for my return, and this here is for my supply. So now I need to define some center planes in each one of those rectangles so I can host my connector perfectly. So I'm going to do create similar. I'm going to do from here to here. And right now I'm just eyeballing it. But what I can do is I click here, from here to here to here, and then equal. And I can lock that equal. And then from here to here to here, I make it equal as well. And now I do the same thing for the supply, create similar. I have one plane here, and one plane here. And I come from here to here to here, and I make and I make that equal and then from here to here to here and I make that equal. So now we have an interesting dimension here which is 89 inches to a face that's going to define the bottom gas supply entry later. So let's do that. We do create similar. Let's say from here to here and now we define a distance from strong to weak and I'm going to make that distance 89 inches. And just as a reminder, those 89 inches are this 89 inches. And then we're going to measure 25 and 9 16 and 12 and 5 16. So let's do that. And then from this plane, which is now our strong reference, I'm going to do create similar. And I'm going to do one plane here. And I'm going to do another plane here. And then from here to here, strong to weak, right? We know that this distance is 25 and 9 16. And then 
from here to here is 12 and 5 sixteenths. Now let's define this plane here, which is 27 and 5 sixteenths away from it. So we do create similar. Then we place that plane, let's say around here. Then we measure from here to here. And then we know that that distance here is 27 and 5 sixteenths of an inch. And then you do create similar, and then you have another plane here. And that distance is about 5 inches. So from here to here, let's call it 5 inches. And now we have to define our extrusions so we can host our connectors. So first, let's do the return. So we do create, extrusion. We're going to pick planes. We're going to make sure we lock them. So we do this one, this one, this one, and this one. And then we do TR from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. And remember, the extrusion is measuring the z-axis in the positive direction as 2, 6. So I want to go down, let's say, minus 1 inch, just to have something. And this is going to make the hosting of our connector a lot easier. Let's take a look at our 3D view. Let's go ahead and change this to shade it. Let's take a peek. And there it is. So here's where we're going to host our return air duct. Let's do the same for supply. And I just realized we haven't defined the parameters for the ducts. So let's go ahead and do that. So from here to here, we can call this the return duct width. And then we can do from here to here. And we call this the return duct height. And now we do the same thing for the supply. So from here to here, that's the supply duct width, and then from here to, well, actually I, I realize this equal here, it's not meant to be between this plane and this plane, it's meant to be between this plane and this plane right here, just like the return is to this plane, okay? So let's modify that, I'm going to do delete and then I'm going to do from here to here to here and that's what's supposed to be equal that's much better okay I'm going to take I'm going to take this out a little bit and I'm going to take this out a little bit and now I can associate this to a new parameter called supply dot height okay now let's do our extrusion for the supply. For that we go create, extrusion, pick planes, make sure it's locked. You click here, 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 and here. And then you trim from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. Very good. And then we give a minus one inch. That's pretty good. Okay. So got our 3D view, very good. We have our return and our supply. Now we need our gas and our drain, so. And if you find this content valuable, there are many ways you can support it. You can like the video, you can leave a comment down there. It really helps me out. You can subscribe to the channel. You can review it on Google. You can join our Patreon community and support it directly. You can give super thanks. There's a button somewhere down there. Buy me coffee, keeps me awake, keep doing videos. As simple as that. You can spread the word with coworkers on social media, and you can recommend my services so I can help them out. 